You may have seen her on America's Got Talent or Comics Unleashed or How to Be a Grown-Up. She has performed stand-up all over the world, including for the troops in Afghanistan. We are thrilled to have her here this evening. Please give it up for the one, the only, Jody Miller! <laughs> Oh, there it's on, it's on, yes! Aviva! I love just, I just love that name. It's like my favorite name. I just want to like yell it. Aviva! Doesn't it sound powerful? It does, right? I feel like I would just scream that everywhere. I love it. This is so great. Please keep it going for Kate and Jill and everybody involved in this. I'm so happy to be here uh, when I found out about this, uh, this organization and, and what they do and I went on the website and, and read about it. It was inspiring. You know, taking you know teenage girls at risk. You know, uh, teaching them stuff, getting them ready for. I just actually it was so. I'm gonna open a home for single women over 40. <laughs> Cats are welcome, of course. <laughs> I will be there. <laughs> I feel like I need that. You know what I mean? Uh, and then if somebody wants to foster me, that's fine too. <laughs> Even though I am looking for a forever home, I think. Uh... <laughs> I feel like it could work, uh, especially the classes on compassion and empathy. I feel like I have a lot of friends that actually need that fucking class. You know what I, mean? I was reading a lot about the website uh, on the website too about uh, Aviva. The name in 1927 was actually changed uh, from Hamburger Home. That was the name, right? It was called Hamburger Home, uh, named after uh, I guess the guy, the benefactor of it. I guess that's what it was called, Hamburger Home, but it was for single working. Jewish female, okay? Which is me, exactly. Uh, I'm a hamburger, basically. Uh, not a cheeseburger, because that's not kosher, okay? <laughs> I can't believe they went with hamburger home. I still, I was reading, I was like, what, really? Somebody was like, yeah, we should just go with hamburger home. Like, they couldn't come up with anything else more creative. I hope that the guy who gave them the money actually owned a hamburger place, because that would be weird if he didn't. <laughs> um, so this name is much better. Uh, it's the second best name change since Prince went back to Prince, in my opinion. <laughs> right? Isn't it? Oh, teenage girls. I'm so happy that I'm not one uh, anymore. Uh, I remember my mom used to threaten me all the time. She said, just wait until you get older, and then you have a daughter. And she's a teenager. I'm like, all right, stop threatening me, bitch. I don't know what you're doing. I get it. I'm a terrible person. I'm a teenage girl. That's what we do. And then I realized that actually, I don't think women actually grow out of it. This is what I realized about women. Teenagers, adults, we just give angry compliments too. Like all the time. I just noticed that with all of my, especially in Los Angeles. There are always very aggressive compliments that girls give. Like, oh my god, are you losing weight? What's up? <laughs> are you okay? What's happening with you? Is that a new shirt? When did you buy that? Oh. <laughs> it's so weird. So God bless anybody that works with teenage girls, is what I'm saying, anywhere in the world. Because, <laughs> uh, oh my god, it's amazing. Uh, I was surrounded by a lot of children on America's Cup Talent, too. I don't know if anybody watches that show. It's a very family-heavy uh, show, and there's a lot of kids on that show. That show actually made me strangely competitive with children. That's the real thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because there's a million dollars at stake. You know, a ten-year-old came flying up to me backstage. She was like, this is my dream. This is all I've ever wanted. My entire life, it's my dream, I need this. I'm like, I'm sorry, you haven't even gotten your period yet, okay? <laughs> like, I sit at home mouth kissing my cat, I need this! <laughs> <laughs> that show also is like, when, when you're on a show like that too, it's a weird thing because they broadcast your real age, which is unacceptable. <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, oh. And I'm proud of my age, I am. But they led with it, with any kind of recap or interview. They're like, 42-year-old comedian Jody, come over here. Come over here, 42-year-old comedian. Help her, she's 42. Help her over here, let's go. But eggs, we're dropping out of her over here. Kick them off, let's go. That's a weird feeling. I would love to actually uh, volunteer. I actually do, I teach stand-up to uh, at-risk middle school students, and this would be something that I'd love to volunteer with these girls, I think it's important, especially to give them like some better role models than some of the women that I've grown up with. Just take Disney princesses, for, for example, seriously. I mean, I think Cinderella is the only one who actually had to work for her man, you know what I mean? <laughs> Look at like Snow White and Sleeping Beauty. All those bitches had to do to find a man was wake up, that's it. <laughs> I feel like I can help these girls too, teach them it's okay when you grow up, 
get a career, find yourself. I've been doing it my whole life. But when you're in your 20s, you're actually, it's funny because people celebrate a single girl in their 20s. They call them smart. They're like, oh my god, look at you, you smart girl playing the field, not settling down. Good for you, you smarty smart pants. <laughs> Then when I was single in my 30s, I was just called strong. That's it. Everyone's <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I'm still single. Well, you're strong. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're really hanging on. You're just white knuckling it, you know? You're solid like a rock. Cause you. And now that I'm single in my 40s, I'm just spiritual. That's it. <laughs> I mean, have you seen Jody? She's super centered. She really... <laughs> She knows how to breathe. She's comfortable in her own skin, even though it's older. Good for her. <laughs> it's very strange. I also feel like I think with Aviva, I could help these girls, help, help mold them and teach them how to manifest their destiny. I mean, I haven't been able to do it yet, but I feel like I can help them do it. That shit's a lot of work, manifesting. Have you guys realized that? The breathing, and the meditating, and the visualizing, and the writing in the journals, and oh my god, vision boards. Or for anyone under 30, I'm sure the teenage girls just call it Pinterest. I think that's what they would call it. That's it. I, I ever since I was a young girl, would just put pictures everywhere. I have so many pictures all over my house, I don't even know what I've asked for at this point. I'm like, why is there a picture of a pig in my fridge? <laughs> like, did I want a pet pig at one point? Did I run out of bacon? Did I have sex with a guy who squeals? Nobody knows what I'm saying. I don't know. I haven't figured life out. <laughs> That's why I think I need a home for women over, over 40. I'm going to come move into it. Yeah, I think I need to. I have so many self-help books, I'm so scared that if I die, someone's going to find my Kindle and be like, wow, this chick was screwed up. Seriously. <laughs> like every book, like The Secret, The Secret 2, The Secret of the Secret, What the Hell is the Secret, How to Get What You Want and What You Have, and my favorite, How to Get What You Want by taking it from someone else, so no idea you took it, that's a good one. <laughs> I also have like every dating book too, like all dating books, like he's just not that into you, you're just not that into him, he's physically inside of you and still not that into you. <laughs> I don't like those books! <laughs> I would get better advice. I feel like I would to teenage girls. I would. Oh, God. I want to just, I feel like more things should be geared towards women, especially like movies, too. I always look at the movies that are coming out, the Transformers and the G.I. Joes, Avengers, everything is like geared towards like things that boys played with. Boys, 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 boys. I want to see movies that represent the, like the toys that us girls played with. Like, I want to see next summer from Fox and Hasbro comes a story about a girl and her oven. How about that? <laughs> I want to see Transformers 4, Rise of the Easy Bake Oven. Yeah, right? Cook the shit out of them with that three watt light bulb. That's what we do. A three watt light bulb. That's what they put in those ovens. Do you guys remember having them? You can like light a caterpillar on fire with a magnifying glass faster than you can cook one of those dump cakes. Remember you put it in there, the batter, seven hours later, that shit would not be done. And you're like, well, I got, no, don't put your hand in the oven. And finally just take the uncooked batter and it's like, I'm drinking it, I don't care. I'm just drinking it. It's a milkshake. It's what it is. You know, it's funny when I told all my friends that I was, uh, that I, that I was, you know, doing this amazing benefit, um, they're like, teenage girls, uh, I would see teenage boys because I'm a cougar, so that's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually Jewish, so I'm a Jewger, really, actually. Oh my God. I mean, it's like to hook up with young guys, but I have a lot of guilt about that, okay? <laughs> I mean, not enough to stop, obviously. <laughs> I just believe in our country's motto, no child left behind. That's my motto. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's so weird, too. I don't even know what the age of a cougar is. So many people use that term. They just throw it around. I was at a Starbucks. I heard these two girls talking. These two young girls are like, oh my god, I'm doing this guy last night. He's 23, and I'm 26. <gasps> I'm a total cougar. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. If you're a cougar, then what the hell am I? <laughs> a saber-toothed tiger? <laughs> it's so weird. Something else I would, I think I would help with these girls is, I, social media is just ridiculous to me. It gets out of hand, especially naked pics. I can't even, it's ridiculous. There was a guy that I was dating, uh, well I was hooking up with a 25 year old, which was, <laughs> was strange. And it was going as well as it can go for that. And then he sent me a text that said, where have you been all my life? That's what the 25 year old asked me. Where have you been all my life? I'm like, well, let's see. <laughs> When you were born, I was a senior in high school. And then guess what? He sent me a picture of a naked junk shop. That's what guys, that's what they do, these kids today. Guys and girls. It's ridiculous, because I didn't grow up in that time. I wanted to come to an end. 
mainly because it scares the crap out of us, okay? Because we never know when that's coming. And th to me, it's almost like guys are just shocked in the morning when they wake up and it's still there, so they have to document it and send it to every girl they know. Like, oh my god, there it is again! Snap, happy Tuesday, ladies. <laughs> like, it's so weird. It makes me think, like, what did guys do before camera phones? You know what I mean? Like, I imagine some guy in the 80s and 90s just staring at himself like, yeah! Oh, she could see it now. <laughs> She'd be right over, obviously. Quick, get the Polaroid and a stamp! <laughs> Which would actually be a great letter. <laughs> like, if anybody ever wants to do that, I would just say go old school. But do it with a Polaroid and only, like, half develop it when you mail it. So girls are like, oh my god, what is this? I don't know. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, that's going on my vision board. That's where that is. <laughs> <laughs> More importantly, I would tell girls to never send one. I, I can't even, to me, it's ridiculous. I would never do that. I mean, I'd say that, although I have. So I would never do it again. <laughs> it's so, it's bizarre to me. Like, I, I need, like, hair and makeup and a lighting crew and a wind fan. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, the one time that I did it for this 25-year-old, I had to set the timer up on my iPad for a five-second delay. And which is worse, because now you're standing there naked for five seconds trying to figure out what you think is sexy. You're like, five, four, three, two, there it is, that's it. Which <laughs> is not sexy. And I try like every pose and I'm deleting and filtering. I finally send it, he shoots back, he's like, hot, send another. I'm like, I don't have another day to waste! <laughs> that took 12 hours, oh my god. I, uh, I love doing benefits. I do a lot of them. Um, it's a great, it's always great give back to anybody that, you know, that needs it. And uh, I actually have been trying to get pregnant. Um, last year I did a whole, I did like the entire year, five rounds of IUI. And it's amazing, but I did it the right way though, don't get me wrong. I, uh, I before each insemination, I went out and I got drunk. I mean, like super wasted, because I, I wanted it to be natural, obviously, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, fingers crossed, I'll make it tonight. Um, <laughs> My daughter's Italian and Irish, which basically means her baby will be loud and drunk, and I'm okay with that, actually. Um, but honestly, the doctor was very funny. I actually did a benefit uh, for them, uh, their Christmas benefit for women that were trying to get pregnant as well, because it's a lot of money. But the doctor, because he knew I was a comedian, so he liked to mess with me. Before the first insemination, I kid you not, I am in the stirrups, sitting in there, and he walks in the room and goes, okay, I've got the horse sperm, get the horse, I'm just kidding, we're not using horse sperm. <laughs> And I go, uh, I'm sorry, are you kidding? If I gave birth to a centaur, do you know how famous I would be? I'd get my own show for sure. <laughs> Can you make that shit happen? <laughs> I mean, assuming I survived the childbirth, because that actually sounds painful. <laughs> but then think about it, I'd have like a half little boy, half horse that I could ride to the comedy clubs in LA traffic. <laughs> and I'd take mama to work under me. <laughs> Think about those bragging rights. Be like, oh, your son is on the honor, honor roll? My son just won the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> Still hope of mine, but I don't, I don't have, I don't have a baby, but I do have a cat. Um, it's, uh, I know, it's, it's obvious that I have a cat. I don't even need to say it. It was actually my fear when I turned 40 and I was still single that I would open the door and just a pack of cats would come and run in. Like, give up, we're here, it's okay. It's all right, Jody, you can give up now. <laughs> I actually, it's like my version of The Bachelorette, 25 cats just come fucking run in. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny because every, you know, guys, it's you typically that don't like. You guys don't like cats, typically. And I don't understand why you don't like cats, because you're exactly like a cat. Okay, girls are like dogs. Okay, we've been conditioned to think that men are like dogs, and women are like cats. But this could be further from the truth. Guys, you're like cats, you're aloof and emotionally unavailable. <laughs> women are exactly like dogs. We're exactly like dogs. We're like, hey, where you going? 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 Can I go? 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 I'm gonna wait right here. 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 Shoes. The guys, you're like cats. You're like, oh, you're home. Okay, uh, so this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna feed me. <laughs> then I'm gonna stare out the window at nothing. <laughs> then I'm gonna pass out in the bathroom. Deal? Is that a deal? <laughs> Women are like dogs. We clean up after ourselves. You ever see a dog vomit? Eats that crap right back up. <laughs> yeah, it usually does it real quick. You don't even know what's happened, but guys are like cats. You'll puke anywhere and make a huge scene about it. You're like, ha! Ah, ah. <laughs> And then I go, God, can you clean that up? It's so gross. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to. If it's a dog, I got it. I got it. 
when we are like dogs, we need to be groomed. Shampoo, condition, blow dry, fluffy. Guys are like, hatch, like, what? I'm dirty? Oh, I'm dead. I'm ready. Let's go. What is going on? My name is Jody Miller. Thank you guys so much. Please keep supporting. I'll see you guys.